on geospatial power digitization of mining, riverine ecology, healthcare, disaster management, and other verticals in the state of Uttarakhand. May I now invite to the stage Sri Abhijit Agrawal, Project Director, MPSCDC. Abhijit Agrawal is an IAS officer of 2010 batch who has previously served as Commissioner, Treasury and Accounts in the Government of Madhya Pradesh and Managing Director, MP State Civil Supplies Corporation. Mr. Agrawal, the stage is all yours. Good afternoon to all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank AGI for giving us an opportunity to present the good governance models and uh, the applications that we have developed in Madhya Pradesh. I have just, I would like to add a caveat, I've just joined a month back in this organization. And uh, the technology part I'm also like learning and this is a good platform for me to understand different technology and its dimension and applicability in the governance. So uh, I'll tell something about MPSSDI. As you know, it's a larger part of the state chapter of NSDI. And in 2014, we, uh, the state government issued the framework of MPSSDI. And, uh, it was, there was an organization called MAP IT and it got merged into MPACDC. So we do the regular procurement of all the remote sensing data and its usage across different departments. And we also promote the use of GIS and uh, government processes. So uh, objective of MPAC SSDI is like working on the GIS platform and remote sensing and processing at the state level and interdepartmental operability. So MPSSDI, ha MPSSDI has, uh, over the time, developed a lot of uh, satellite imageries, uh, collection and repository at the state level. And we have almost 150 plus GIS layers which are available with us. And uh, we, uh, like MPSCDC is like an IT company from the government side where we have our own development team. And we have developed almost 30 plus GIS based mobile and web applications, some of which we'll be showing, you know, uh, how they work. And uh, one of the best part that I can sense from the, coming from the administration is, once we were as uh, district collectors or in the field, uh, we, we used to understand that there are a lot of problems in the field. And after, you know, coming to this organization, I'm finding that we have found a lot of solutions to them. So a lot of inputs from the field can help the uh, state level IT uh, framework to develop and propagate. So this is one of the very nice application, CMANC, wherein you can get the information of a particular point, a parcel of the land, that this land belongs to whom. So this is a citizen centric app, where it is a free utility available to all the citizen, wherein if you are standing on a particular piece of land in Madhya Pradesh, it used to be a very tedious job. If you ask some person in Madhya Pradesh, I mean, to get information from Patwari or the field functionary from revenue that this land belongs to whom, or what is the khasra number of this particular land, it used to, you know, Patwaris used to take a lot of time and it used to be a difficult, uh, you know, proposition for citizens. So we made a, we digitized the whole data through GIS and now if you're standing on a particular place through the, this uh, CMANC app, you can get the complete information. And if you traverse along the parcel of the land, it can even calculate the area. So it, and it's, you know, it's a use per day is 1.5 lakh uh, users are using it on a daily basis. Initially, when we installed it, our servers got crashed because we could not anticipate the kind of usage it would generate to the citizens. Next is one of the very important area as far as the uh, permissions are concerned. 
earlier to have any kind of uh, you know permission for uh, forest department for industrial mining purposes we used to have a process flow which is completely offline wherein the uh, concerned person or the agency has to apply to the department and it used to take minimum of at least a month wherein in fact the chasing by the district magistrate is being done then only it can take a month or so so now it's a completely faceless system wherein you have to apply for the noc on the portal and the field functionary would go there measure there and whatever the comment is there based on the gis platform they will be able to generate the noc the citizen would be able to or the user would be able to generate the noc and we have been able to monetize almost 11 lakh rupees from this and the use is increasing day to day i mean we have just launched this application some times back so this has enabled us reduce the time cycle from months to even days so this is one area where we have uh, successfully demonstrated the use of gis for the citizen and to the uh, you know do the bpr part of it next is uh, for the public dis uh, this uh, uh, vidyut distribution we have also uh, sorry for the plantation part of it i mean we have used the gis wherein the citizen who are planting their uh, small seedlings or small uh, this plantation they we get to know where is it being planted through a mobile app we generate the kind of appreciation uh, certificate for him digitally so that it promotes citizen and we are also able to capture the real time data where in location is also captured and the numbers are also captured so this is a kind of heat map that and the dashboard we are able to generate we always try in mpscdc to have a dashboard in place with the application so that we are also able to see the utility part of it and how the data is getting generated this is a, one of the very good example this was also a very large problem area because to get the land use certificate from town and country planning many of you might vouch for it used to be a very difficult task in terms of time delays and in terms of other bad practices i can say when i was in districts i mean we used to really shout at these officials that why don't you digitize your processes you can have your own maps wherein a parcel of land speaks for itself that my land use is this so now we have completely done this process at our state end wherein the citizen can just go log in pay the user charge and get the land uh, use certificate so this has also given us lot of you know flexibility to the citizen there is no interface with the officers and we have also been able to monetize almost 50 plus lakh rupees and this will be a game changer especially urban development and uh the way people have to develop their properties so they won't have to go for offices and they will be able to do this from their home there is a kind of uh, map that generates on the it's shown on the left side and uh, this is one of the area which i believe is a very tricky affair very tricky thing automatic layout process and approval scrutiny system for town and country planning suppose i have to make a say a house in a particular vicinity a land is empty so i have to go to the concerned town and country planning and i have to ask that this is my map this is my uh, drawings these are my drawings kindly approve these drawings so what happens is the uh, authorities will process is manually they would say okay aapke is taraf pe this way is you know little on the uh, right hand side you have to shift it so as to make a minimum space and the common provisions of the urban areas are to be put in place and to be scrutinized as a purpose of business rules in municipal commissioner bhopal only i'll tell you there are 3500 business logic that are to be put in before we are putting this software into place so we have designed a complete system that this is a use case wherein you can see the shadow area is the area for which once the layout was uh, submitted we could 
uh, from the software analysis, we could get that this is the shadow area which is coming in the road part of it. So the permission can only be given to the other part of it. And the next layer of, layer of integration that we are working on is, once these layouts are, layouts are approved, we'll even merge this data to our GIS set of data. So the continuous updation of our layouts and the structures which are in place will happen in our GIS platform and layers. So this may become a part of you know, our PM Gati Shakti, wherein we are not using on a batch kind of mode, we are using on a continuous mode, that whatever is the updation of the data, whatever is the say urban cluster, industrial clusters, warehouses, road networks are getting generated, they will get continuously updated in our databases. So this is a very tricky logic that we had to develop and we had to put in those kind of 3,500 different uh, combinations and business logic so as to get the output from the uh, software and the GIS uh, layers that we had. Uh, th this uh, village Khasla uh, cadastral map is also we are providing using a digital system wherein the citizen can download the completable uh, shape file format uh, and they can use for whatever purpose they require for. And we have already, you know, uh, like 700 plus villages have already been downloaded by uh, different citizens. And this is also a very good monetization data, uh, model for us with the set of available data that we have. And this is uh, for the geo tag verification, especially in urban areas where uh, identifying of the property and uh, using it for, for the taxation purpose, we have started this uh, stat when geo property survey mobile app and online trade license where uh, industrial uh, or a trader can get the uh, trade license from the application part of it. He doesn't have to go to any government authority. We have the property data, metadata with us, and that, that can be used for the uh, generation of the trade license. This is the kind of format that we are able to generate. Uh, this is a PIMS property information and management system where is a, a SAP based decision, uh, decision system and uh, is already in place where owner name, property ID, et cetera, are available and uh, we are integrating it with e-Nagar Palika of uh, government of Madhya Pradesh, wherein uh, complete information of the property can be thrown. So these are certain areas where we have shown it to G2C. And you know, the most important part that what I can understand is when you are working on G2G, it's very difficult to push your things in a political set of government because you are not able to showcase your products. So once you are able to harness the strength of GIS for G2C, then you are able to push even your G2G agenda for the higher political bosses. So th these kind of G2C application has given us a lot of confidence to our team. Uh, and now we are also working on a lot of G2G kind of efforts wherein different uh, departments are using the GIS models, GIS set of layers, so as to do the better planning and better execution of their schemes and their ideas. So one area is the 3D submergence, uh, dam submergence and uh, analysis for the water resource department. Another area is uh, the spatial decision support system for uh, land allotment and management for MSME and industrial department. Third is for road information system for MPRRDA. One of the other areas that the industrial corridors which are coming up east, west and north, south, we have mapped those industrial corridors so any particular investor may see and what can be the likely potential uh, place for him to invest and how different uh, planning can be integrated with that, and electricity network mapping and integration with SCADA. So these are like, we have already created the industrial, complete industrial area map, wherein we have the set of information of land, their availability, which are the vacant areas, and what are the connecting points to those industrial areas. So, with this information, any particular investor 
would like to invest in a particular area, okay, what is my supply plan, what is my supply chain, which I can, what kind of resources or what kind of strength I can have on this particular piece of land, and what are the already existing industries in that particular area. So this is, a giving, this is giving a good set of information and the decision support system for the industries. These are the corridors planning that we have done for Varanasi, Mumbai and Indore, which is uh, industrial corridor. We have mapped this on our GIS with the heat map, so as the decision can be taken by the industries. This is one of the very new project that we took up wherein we are forecasting the through 3D analysis of the submergence and the area that can get affected and the kind of population and the land that will get affected for a creation of a dam. And almost 250 plus dam analysis has been provided to the user department, that is water and resource department. And this is a kind of, you know, level wise analysis of volume and area of submergence has been proposed. So this can even become very handy for the disaster management authority to plan that if my FTL is there, what would be the likely submergence and if it has breezed even FTL, what can be the likely submergence area. And before, you know, instituting a project, if the authority wants, what is the kind of money that I'll have to put in for the land acquisition that can be estimated through this kind of analysis. Then, uh, for remote sensing data and resource mapping and change detection, we are doing the soil nutrient map, land diversion. Land diversion is a very good area. I have got a Mike Hasra, wherein the use of the land is already marked that is it an agricultural land or a diverted or converted land. Now, through the satellite imagery, we can see if anything construction has been done and the land is here marked as the agricultural land. So it's a fit case for a violation so we'll try and map such people and we'll try and book them under our revenue provisions. So we'll be able to get more revenues and get those cases with the due penalty and the due process for the regularization of their uh, land diversion cases. Then identification of crops for Girdavari. Now we have started AIML for this particular part where through ML, uh, AIML algorithms we have feed in the test data and our uh, 18,000 patwaris in the field through their mobile app, they capture every parcel of land, what is the area of cultivation, what kind of crop they are growing. So we are through AMI, AIML, we are, what we are trying to achieve is that we are throwing a set of data to patwaris so as to what is the likely percentage of error and percentage of correctness of AIML tools and what is the ground truthing of that particular processing of AIML data. So this is one area we are, where we are working. I'll also focus one of the future area of working on this particular project. And Bhoj wetland monitoring is, Bhoj is a near around a wetland area around Bhopal. So it's a project funded by EPCO. Uh, which is a government uh, society of government of Madhya Pradesh of uh, government of uh, Madhya Pradesh for environment. So land use changes we are uh, generating through different time series maps and we are giving them the alert that these are the changes, these are the development which has happened in that particular wet in, wetland area. And biosphere mapping is something which we are doing through LIS and uh, uh, VW satellite data and we are preparing the detailed reports. So these are kind of maps and we have also come up with our own uh, drone uh, vertical where we have engaged uh, certain industry players and we are increasing the usability of drones and uh, we have also enabled our district collectors so that they can also start doing innovation from their local uh, resources and local kind of team. We have given them financial uh, sanctions so as to promote the local innovation at their level also. Uh, these are some city planning, uh, Bhopal ABD, uh, and these are the, and you know, uh, I'll tell you from my perspective that when I was a, a district development officer, so uh, that point of time I used to see why can't we have a Abadi map. So now this project uh, which has come up from DOLR is actually serving that purpose. 
So this is all uh, uh, from our side, this is our portal. And certain areas which we are now, our wish list that I would like to share that we want to make more layers for PM Gati Shakti and we would like to collaborate with uh, Ministry of Commerce and Government of India so as to create a greater data repository. And second, the area which we are uh, still is untouched is large melas and congregation can be managed through drones and through GIS, where traffic planning, mela management can be a real time decision support system, which I believe that is a future of GIS. And it can throw a very good problem statement for the industry that melas will always happen in this country and so the large scale gathering. So how can you can assimilate the GIS layers? AIML for the development applications, which we are, have done in-house, we, we would want to in, increase and monetization of GIS data and how best we can throw it to the citizen. And the last point is now we want to go not only crop variety and type of crop what is there. For example, MP has got Durham wheat, which is used in pasta. So which areas have got Durham and which area has got other type of wheat within the same crop year? So detailing down to that level is something new area which can give industry that, okay, this area is Durham based, then I have to go and uh, make the, you know, buy, buy it from that local market. So that is a kind of data set that we want to generate for ourselves and make uh, different stakeholders for this whole thing. This is all from our side. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you.